Thanks, I look Senator. forward to following up with you, Senator. <clears throat> Thanks, Senator Padilla. Senator Hawley. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary. Thank you for being here. Let me start with what I hope is a simple question. Do we need to have more or fewer people coming to our southern border? Uh, Senator, Senator, we are working on diminishing the number of people whom we encounter at our southern border because of the challenge it presents. We're trying to build lawful, safe, and orderly pathways okay. to accomplish that. Okay, fewer. So we need to have fewer, which means we need to roll back incentives to come. So I, I would have I thought that would have been the answer. Let's talk about what you're doing, though. In January of this year, you rolled out a new phone app called CBP1, an app for a cell phone. I've got a picture of it behind me here. This phone app allows, and I'm going to quote from your own fact sheet, it allows, and I quote, non-citizens without appropriate documents for admission to schedule an appointment to come to the border. They can now go on their phone and schedule a time to come to the border and then be admitted. And you identified seven separate border points of entry where they could come. Five of them in Texas, two of them in California, one in Arizona. It's like a concierge service for illegal immigrants. My question is, you didn't think the border crisis was bad enough that now we're going to have an app that allows illegals to schedule their appointments and come and be admitted to this country? Uh, Senator, you're mischaracterizing the use of the application. Let me, let me explain it to you. Uh, we are currently enforcing the public health order of Title 42, and I know you're very familiar with it. There is a process for individuals who claim an exception to the Title 42 expulsion authority because of an acute medical uh, uh, condition. Well, let's talk uh, about this urgent, app. If I, if I may finish, an urgent, um, um, an urgent humanitarian reason. So f instead of them coming in between the ports of entry to claim that urgent medical condition, that extraordinarily um, uh, acute humanitarian cause, we allow a limited number to arrive at our ports of entry and seek the emergency relief that they need. Schedule, you, you allow them, let's, let's, be, let, let, let's be particular about and what I you do. I should say you that the CBP-1 app was not uh, unveiled for the first time on January 5th of this year. Oh, oh no, it but was, you changed it. You made it available on January 5th to the illegals themselves. You don't have to be a lawyer to use it. You don't have to be a member of a non-governmental organization. Anybody can download the app and use it on their phone. And for the first time, you allow them to schedule appointments. Now, let's talk about what actually happens when they come to the border. It's interesting. You characterize this when you rolled it out as an application for applying for asylum. But nowhere on the app do you actually require the illegal migrants to apply for asylum or to claim asylum or anything about asylum. And in fact, when they then get to the border, you don't ask them questions, you don't do interviews, you just release them. Here's the Texas Monthly, not a notable conservative outlet, who reports, and I quote, at no point does the app ask users, are you seeking asylum? Those arriving for the CBP-1 appointments are given no interviews, asked no questions about vulnerabilities that they may or may not have listed in the app or about why they're coming to the United States. They're simply released into the country, end quote. So rather than building a wall, Mr. Secretary, you have built Ticketmaster for illegal immigrants. You are, um, Senator, you are conflating programs. Let me, let me explain well, just, to just you. Just respond to this. Is it true that they are given no interviews, asked no questions, and simply released into the country? Let me explain to you what we announced on January 5th. No, no I want you to explain but, to me what's happening. I, I know what you oh, announced. So, I read it to you. So I, so I will explain to you what is happening. Are they given because, interviews? Let's start with that. Are they given interviews? We were previously experiencing that's, almost, that's starting almost, to sound like a no. Well, let, let's, just, 90, let's just hone in here. Mr. Almost, Secretary, my time is, is very limited. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to drive to some clarity here. But Senator, Are they, the Texas Monthly has reported that once illegal immigrants go on their phone and reserve their time to come to the border, once they use your concierge service that you've created for them, when they come, they are given no interviews. They are asked no questions about any vulnerabilities. They are simply released into the country. Is that happening? Uh, Senator, you are mistaken, and if I may explain. Are they given interviews? If I may explain, individuals who seek parole 
under our January 5th program for Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans are screened and vetted before they arrive at our border. That wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, they, they, go on an, they go on the phone and they just reserve a time and then they show up and they're not given, they're given nothing. Listen to this. Even immigration advocates are amazed about this. Here, also from the Texas Monthly, here's one immigration advocate whose first name is Orta. She says, that's the crazy part. Nothing in this new program requires you to actually seek asylum. Somehow, We've decided to punish those who arrive at the border without the app who may be seeking asylum, but we just let in anybody who may or may not have any particular reason to seek asylum so long as they've made an appointment on your Ticketmaster app. This seems crazy to me. Senator, it's a complete mischaracterization of the program that we announced and are implementing. So how many people have used, how many people have used the app then? That you are referring to. So if I can explain. How many people have used so, the app? So we have, um, we had a significant surge of Cuba. How many people Asian, have used the app? Nicaraguans and Venezuelans. M Mr. Secretary, you're here to answer my questions. How many people have used the app? Uh, tens of thousands have sought to uh, make an appointment at the port of entry under our parole program. How, okay. Okay, good. How many have been admitted without an interview at the border? Um, well, uh, you are... Uh, again, inserting a fact uh, that does not belong in your question. So if I can, I will get you the precise... <laughs> I'm, re I'm reading to you from public reports about how your own app works. You're just blanket denying... Actually, you're not quite denying it. You're saying that maybe we don't understand. Apparently, I don't understand. Texas Monthly doesn't understand. Immigration advocates don't understand. You're the only one who understands, yet you won't answer my question. How much did this cost to develop, by the way? Senator, I don't have the cost, but let me share with you a critical Well, will fact. you get it for us? Let me share with you a critical Will you fact. get us the cost of what it, to develop this app? Happily. Uh, did you use a, did you contract with a tech firm to develop it? Um, uh, Senator, we have seen a approximately... Did you contract 90, with a tech firm to develop it? We have seen an approximately 95% oh, decrease. Did you contract with a tech firm to develop it? Yes or no? Senator, this was led by U.S. Customs and Border Protection our technical experts within the agency, and I certainly will get an answer to your question whether outside consultants were utilized so you don't in the know. development process. You don't know. May I, may I explain to you, since you have a misunderstanding of the program, what it is and the impact, the positive impact it has had on encounters of these four populations in between the I just want to know why it is that you are allowing people to come to this border to make appointments, to not be interviewed, and then how many have just been released? Is it true, by the way, as the Texas Monthly reports, that they're simply released into the country on official parole? And get this, they're not given, according to their reporting, any kind of follow-up. Their court dates are in immigration courts, the Texas Monthly reports, not even necessarily asylum trials. They're often general de deportation hearings where defendants can make arguments for remaining in the country. Is that true? That is um a completely uh, mistaken understanding of how the immigration process works. That language is completely confusing and erroneous. <laughs> well, it is confusing. What's confusing is why anybody would think that an app like this to allow illegal immigrants to literally reserve a time to come to the border and then be ushered in without an interview, without follow-up, without tracking, is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Let me ask you in my very short time remaining is, something is, else about Chinese is, nationals. I've, I've only got a minute left. That is false. Let, let me ask you about, about the, the Chinese nationals who we all saw coming over the border, busloads of them, and then being released in the American interior. What's the, what's the percentage increase of Chinese nationals who crossed the border this year, Mr. Secretary? Let's just focus on maybe the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, the, number of, the, the number of Chinese nationals encountered at our southern border uh, has increased significantly. Do you know how much? Over the past. I don't have the precise percentage. I do. It's 900% it's just in the Rio Grande Valley sector. Are any, of, are any of these people who came in this bus, these Chinese nationals, members of the Chinese Communist Party? Um, Senator, if an individual presents a national security or public safety threat, we detain them during the pendency but that's of not their... Quite, but that's not what I asked. I asked if they're members of the CCP. During the pendency of their removal proceedings. Are, so are any of these individuals members of the CCP? So I think there's indeed, about 70 who came on this if, bus. If indeed they are determined to be a national security threat or a threat to public safety, we detain them pending their removal proceedings. Were any of these individuals detained or were they released into the I interior don't, of the country? I don't have 
uh, awareness of that particular group of individuals. Um, and so you don't know if any of them were members of the CCP, or actually you do know, you just won't say. I, I don't know from the photograph, Senator, to whom But you're surely you know with. about the folks who, you, you've read this report, you're the Secretary of Homeland Security, you're aware of these individuals. Were any of them members of the Chinese Communist Party coming into this country? Senator, you're providing me with a group of individuals without names, identities, or so you're not familiar with this incident that was widely reported on at the southern border? Don't you think it's strange that we have busloads of Chinese nationals coming across our southern border? I'm asking you from a, a hostile country, I'm asking you if they're members of the Chinese Communist Party. And you're, you, won't, you don't know, apparently, you won't say. We are very focused uh, on oh. all things with respect to the People's Republic of but China. But you don't know any of the details. I plead exhaustion, Mr. Secretary. You have exhausted me. You have exhausted this panel. You have exhausted the patience of the American people. You should resign. Senator Welch. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, 